in November of 1095, an extraordinary event occurred in a town called Clermont in France. The Council of Clermont had just voted to support Constantinople in a crusade against the Moslems. And Pope Urban II came out to address the crowd that had assembled to hear about this proclamation. We don't know how many people were there, but we know a lot of people were there. <coughs> Ancient chroniclers say there was something like 150 to 200,000. Even if they overestimated it a tad for a medieval meeting in a small town, it was a lot of people. <laughs> But what made it an astonishing event is, according to more than one witness who saw this event, Pope Urban II announced the crusade, and supposedly all 150,000 people with no prompting, all said in unison, God wills it. And then they started passing out little pieces of red cloth and red ribbons, and people started pinning them to their chest. And who would later adopt that as their, their symbol? Templars. Templars. The Knights Templar. The Knights Templar. So all of this happened at this council. So what was this council all about? And why was the first crusade fought? So I'll do a little on that first. The Fifth Rebellion still use that symbol. Today, first crusade gets a... Uh, a bad mark for most people. They think it was a, a bad thing, the First Crusade. But there were good reasons for the First Crusade to be fought. It needed to be taken back. The In the seventh century, of course, Muhammad arose, started uh, what today we call Islam. And you'll recall that Muslim forces took over pretty much all of North Africa took over much of Turkey, although not Constantinople at the time, took over Spain, and they had gotten all the way in, into northern central France when Charles Martel uh, beat them back at the, uh, the Battle of Tours. So there certainly had been a history of Muslim expansion, but that was 300 years or so before the First Crusade. So did they just take, it just took them a while to get around to it? Or, or were there other factors? Well, there were other factors. Uh, of course, at this time, Jerusalem was headed by a caliph. Uh, there was a guy in the early part of the 11th century called Al-Hakim. And Al-Kahim is generally considered to be insane. Uh, even Muslim historians say he was insane. Uh, but Al-Hakim desecrated the Church of the Holy Sepulchre which had been identified by Constantine's mom as uh, the burial site of Jesus. He made uh, Christians wear long, heavy crosses. They were like this big. And so they're walking around in the streets. They had to wear these heavy crosses, and they were bent over. Uh, Jews had to do a similar thing. This is not necessarily a picture of how all uh, Muslim caliphs treated Christian or Jewish subjects. But this is how Al uh, Hakim treated them, and uh, I hope you got the important point. This was in Jerusalem itself that all this stuff happened. <coughs> so Christians in the West were already starting to get pretty upset as they started to hear about these practices. So there was already a lot of concern, as we would say, in modern times. But then Turkish Muslim forces started to threaten Constantinople itself, the, the center of Eastern Christianity. And finally, in the late part of the 11th century, the, uh, the not the patriarch, the, I guess you would call him the emperor of Constantinople, uh, Alexander Komnenos, sent a, a message to Pope Urban II requesting the, uh, the troops of Western Christianity to help save Constantinople. And this is what set off this extraordinary series of events. First Crusade is really the first real attempt to seize the Holy Lands back from Islam. Up until that point, really all Christendom had done against the Muslims was fight a defensive battle. I mean, Tours was a defensive battle against advancing Muslims. So this is our first real attempt. August 1096, so you'll notice it took almost a year to put these armies together. 
everything happened slowly. Uh, Jerusalem didn't fall until a couple years later, so it took like three and a half years from the time Urban II announced the crusade for Jerusalem to fall. Uh, in 1096, a vast crusader army began the trek from Europe to Constantinople. And most of this happened overland uh, to get to uh, Constantinople. And uh, this, this trek uh, is across some pretty significant mountains and uh, is, is an epic story in of itself. Uh, most of them did go overland uh, to get from Europe to Constantinople, with the exception of uh, Raymond of Toulouse, actually went by ship uh, in order to get there. So this vast crusader army goes on the march. There's another incident I should mention briefly. I'm not going to go into a whole history of it, uh, but we will see this character a little later as we talk about the fall of Jerusalem, so I need to mention him now. So when he pops up again, you'll understand the significance. Not only was Urban II asking for this crusade to be fought, there was a heretofore obscure hermit named Peter the Hermit who was going around France trying to whip people up into a fervor to fight this crusade. Well, Peter the Hermit thought that uh, the troops, which we'll get to in a moment who made up those troops, but he thought they were going way too slow. Why is it taking me a year just to start off? I'll, I'll raise my own army and we will go and we will defeat the Muslims. And he, he accomplished the first part. Peter the Hermit goes around France and raises an army of 20,000 people. Now, they're not knights, they're not fighting men, they're peasants with pitchforks. But he raises 20,000 people and they call it the Peasant's Crusade. And they actually take off for Constantinople like a year and a half before the official armies of the Pope take off. And they loot their way through, uh, uh, through Eastern Europe and, and they finally get to Constantinople. And Alexander Comnenus, when he figures out that this is a rabble, this is not the official Crusader army, he actually tries to talk them out of fighting against <coughs> the Muslims because he knows they're going to get destroyed if they go up against uh, the Muslim troops. But uh, they think they're on a, a, uh, a mission from God, and they go ahead anyway. And they are slaughtered and uh, uh, never again heard from in history. However, at the point that they're slaughtered, their uh, leader is eating bonbons back in Constantinople. So Peter the Hermit lives to fight another day, and we will so get to him. When the, the crusader, the official crusader army gets to Constantinople, uh, they're blessed by Alexander Comnenus who asked them that whatever land they take over uh, as they head south, uh, it just uh, remember that it's actually his land that has been seized by the, the Muslims, and of course he's expecting them to uh, hand it over to him when they take it over. And this actually happens in one case, but all the rest of the cases, it doesn't happen. And when the Western Crusaders take over uh, uh, the various parts of the Holy Land as they're heading south, they turn them into what we now call uh, Latin kingdoms or, or Frankish kingdoms and they set up their own uh, military leaders as the king of those areas. So for a brief period of time, for a few brief decades, there are actually what we call Latin or today we would call European kingdoms in the Holy Lands for this, this brief period of time. For example, in 1097, a crusader army with 43,000 people capture Nicaea. Uh, as an example. So on June 7, 1099, so remember Urban II <coughs> orders the crusade in November of 1095, so it took a while to get there. On June 7, 1099, a crusader army is encamped before Jerusalem. And we might think that this is a vast army with 150,000 people in it, but it's not, because as the crusaders made their way south from Turkey and they took over different Edessa, Nicaea, and whatnot, well, then the leader who became king of that area would keep his troops there. So by the time they get to Jerusalem, some people think there was only 15,000 of them. I mean, maybe it was more, but this is not a vast army, and they are attacking one of the most impregnable defensive positions in the world, which is uh, the gates of Jerusalem.